What's up guys? Welcome back to Sim Park Observer. This is Jason and today we're going to do a basic building tutorial for Planet Coaster version 2.3. Okay, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to go ahead and select the buildings tab down below here. And right here on the left to right we've got new tabs for our buildings and uh, the categories are walls, facilities, roofs, wall extras, building attachments, decorations and wall signs. I know it's a lot to go over, but we'll start from left to right. I think this is kind of how Frontier meant to develop this, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's uh, a fact, but I feel like that's the most logical solution, that they figured we could just start with walls, move to facilities, roofs, and then put all the extra bells and whistles on it afterwards. Makes sense to me. Don't know if you agree. Maybe put some comments down below if you want to discuss. Anyway, we're going to start with walls, and we're going to go over here and create a very simple four-walled building. Uh, nothing too fancy, just something for the purposes of this demo. Um, here you can see you've got a bunch of different textures for walls and a bunch of different shapes and sizes as well. We're going to sit, uh, stick to something very simple. I'm going to just do this stucco wall here, the four-meter height plaster wall set. And what you see when we drag it into the park, it not only creates the wall piece, but it actually has that little blue grid underneath it. And that basically is just your blueprint. That blueprint's going to expand and um, carry with you throughout the cycle of the building itself. And we'll go into detail a little bit about that later. But for now, what we want to do is talk about placement. Um, you want to get an idea of where you want to place it. And, and some people want to build directly on the path so that they know where, um, you know, how big the building needs to be and where they want to put it. For now, I'm going to go ahead and show you off uh, the map here how to put a building in here and then we're gonna move it in a little bit so let's just say I want to put it over here somewhere and the object is going to automatically snap to the terrain as you can see here it's done I'll go ahead and get rid of that for now and select it again just so you see it's automatically aligned to the terrain now if I don't like that position or the height I can actually adjust the height and the rotation in a couple different ways and I'm going to show you how if you want to adjust the height just hold down the shift key and then push up your mouse to make it go up and push it back to make it go down. Now you can see how it's kind of doing in these little jumpy increments here and you see the little dots underneath that white line. Um, that is the way that it adjusts uh, the height when you hold down the shift key and raise it up or down. There's a way to do it in a, um, a finer increment uh, than this and I will get to that in a little bit but for now hold down the shift key raise it up or down so you can actually do it in those little um, dotted increments. I want to say that's probably like one meter increments according to the height on the object. Uh, if you want to rotate it hold down the Z key and then move your mouse wheel left or right. Now if you don't like how free uh, it rotates like that and you want to be a little more precise, you can go over here to the rotation snap and turn that on and then when you hold down the Z key and rotate the mouse uh, left and right you get those uh, angle snaps and you can change the angle here from uh, 15 degrees all the way to 45 or you can just simply tap the Z key and it'll rotate it in 45 degree increments every time. Now another way to actually change that rotation snap is to press the space bar and watch over here when I press the space bar that rotation snap goes away. The space bar is a hot key for the rotation snap just in case you guys want a shortcut to do that a lot quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this around here and for the sake of this demonstration we're going to put it right about here but I also said how you can actually change the height instead of doing these incremental snaps to do it more freely and to do that you would just tap the X button and what that's going to do is it's going to pop up your grid lines or your um, your uh, axis. Uh, the green one will actually make your uh, make it go up or down. And you can see how smooth it is now instead of those jumpy one meter increments. Or you can make it go left or right. Or you can make it go front to back just by selecting one of those axes. If you tap the X button again, it's going to change it to the rotational um, uh, axis as well. And you can actually make it go in smooth increments again. It's really not much different than holding down the Z key and making sure that your rotation snap is off, but I just wanted to show you guys that option. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that piece for now, and I'm just going to go ahead and place it back into the park. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit so I can get the right angle that I want for this demo, and then we're going to drop it into the park by clicking the left mouse button. Now you see when I drop it down, it creates that blue grid around here. And what that blue grid is basically your blueprint. And as I said before, it's going to carry with you. And everything that you put inside of this blue grid is going to be maintained for this building. You can see up here, we have building number 6,784. Um, and you can also see that as I move the new piece around, the grid line expands. Basically, that means that any time that I select a piece uh, for this particular building, that entire set, everything that's within that grid is going to be selected. And anything that I 
add in it is going to be put into that particular building itself. Additionally, you can see that um, we have the option when we put walls down to put them on the inner diameter of these blue grids, or we can do on the outer perimeter as well. Um, I think this was designed intentionally so that way if you wanted to put a textured wall on the inside uh, as, let me say, like wood, and then the texture on the outside as stucco, that way your peeps can have a different look inside and out. I think that's what that was placed there for, and some people use it, some people don't, but for this purpose we're not going to get into that much detail. We're just going to keep it on the inner track and we're going to build um, four walls and we're going to make them three wide and three deep. Now you can see everything snaps automatically to the grid lines right there and when I place it over here it actually does this auto stacking and there is actually an option to turn that off if you like and so it just intersects directly with the pieces in there instead of stacks it on top of the one that you have it relatively adjusted to. I like working with the auto stacking. That is the default because it, I know where my piece is going and I don't think it's hidden in the wall that uh, that's selected there instead. So um, I think it's what most people use and it's the one I'd recommend for you guys to build with. Um, and we're going we're gonna to keep it on for the rest of this demo. Um, so I've built three wide. To change the rotation again, just tap the Z key, 45 degree turn. We're going to do three long. Oops. That's actually okay because what I can now show you is how to undo. Um, undo has a couple different options. If you made a mistake, no problem. You can hit the undo button down here, or you can also see you can hit Control Z. I'm going to do that really quick to make it go away. Another way you can actually make it go away, I'm going to put it right back there. If you just right click it, it'll get rid of the current object you have selected first, and then you can right click any one of these pieces to get rid of it. Another way you can actually get rid of it is uh, we're going to go ahead and stack it back there. And if you right click to get rid of your current object and left click to select that object, it gives you a new um, stucco wall <laughs> window here. Uh, it won't say stucco wall if you select a roof piece, obviously. It'll be whatever roof piece you select or whatever object you've selected. And from here, you can actually choose to duplicate that piece, move it, or demolish it or delete. I'm going to go ahead and hit that just to get rid of it for now. We're going to go back to our four meter high wall. And since we've already got three long, we're going to go in and build the back side. And we're going to now do the final side. Oops, I actually went a little too far there. I didn't go far enough. We needed to put one more there, there, there. And another thing, guys, when you're doing this kind of stuff, feel free to adjust the camera any way you want to to make sure that you can actually see what you're doing and have a comfortable view so you know exactly where your pieces are going. Okay, so we've got our three long and three wide um, building structure here. It's a perfect, nice little square. Um, we're done with the walls. We're going to go ahead and make a facility out of this now. And you can see here they have different facilities based on the different textured walls and roofs. Um, you've got the white ones, you've got the bricked ones, uh, and you've also got the stucco ones. We're going to go ahead and make this one a restroom. And you see when I click it, it drops that facility into place. Um, but there's one little problem I actually have at the moment. I didn't actually leave an opening for my facility. You can see that the auto stacking puts it on top of that wall rather than actually through it. So what I need to do is make a space to add my facility. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and get rid of that. And then I'm going to right click this wall right here because we're going to put that right in the center. And then I'm going to go ahead and reselect my stucco restroom and it's going to go right there. Now. If for some reason it's in the wrong position, simply just tap the Z key until it rotates to the right one, left click, click to drop it in, and you're all set. Okay, so I'm going to right click off of that, and now I'm going to go and add my roofs. Um, now there's not much of a selection as far as roofs are concerned. Um, you've basically got these flat pieces here, uh, you've also got these blue metal roofs, and then we've also got um, these uh, roof uh, tiled roofs right here. These are the ones that I think most people use because there's a lot more selections and it looks more like a real roof than anything else. Um, so we're going to go ahead and stick with that. I'm going to start with building my uh, corner slope and I'm going to click that, bring it into the map. And as you can see, it's in the wrong position for here, but I can go ahead and start over here or I can rotate it and start it pretty much anywhere it makes sense. So um, as you can see, the auto stacker is working. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And rather than actually um, moving along to the um, tiled roof slope to complete the other pieces right to the left or right of it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and finish my corner since I've already got that piece selected by just clicking the Z key to rotate. And I'm going to rotate it for that corner. And then I'm going to move over here and rotate it for that corner. And now I can finish off with that piece by right clicking it, making it go away. And I can select my tiled roof slope here to finish the gaps. There. Click the Z, rotate drop it in, tap the Z key, oops, undo, 
Don't forget Control Z is your quick undo key. I usually have my fingers on that those two buttons because I have to do a lot of undos. All right, so our completed edges are done um, and we just got this one little gap right here to fill in. Uh, I can choose to do that a couple of different ways. You've got these um, tiled roof ridges here and here. Uh, it looks kind of silly when we do it that way, especially when there's no other ridge to join it with. I'm going to right click to get rid of that and for now we're just going to be lazy and we're going to click this stucco roof flat. Um, now you're going to see that it's snapping to the edges of these particular pieces but I can't quite get it to be in the center and the reason is because of that hole right there. Uh, the only way that I can get it to align to that is if I kind of move my camera angle up like this a little bit and you'll see it kind of drops down to the bottom of it. Once I get it down there I can kind of readjust my camera a little bit, hold down the shift key and just start raising it up to the relative height that I want it at and then when I'm done I can let go of my shift key and you'll see it kind of stays to that particular height and I can actually add more pieces to that height if I needed to. For now I'm just going to go ahead and left click and drop that into place. I'm going to get rid of that and now we have our completed simple little building. Now there's lots more you can actually do to add to this building. You can add more wall extras, you can do building attachments, decorations and wall signs. Anything you add to this building from those tabs will actually hold to these blueprints and stay with you for anything you do to this building, whether you delete it, move it, or copy it. So we're going to go ahead and jump out of the edit mode for this by going up here to the edit building and we're going to hit done and it brings back up our uh, building window here. Um, from here we can have the choice to edit the building again if we want to just by clicking that little pencil button. We can duplicate it if we really liked it that much. We can actually make another one. Uh, we can move it or we can demolish it. For now we just want to go ahead and move it because I want to put it in a place where my peeps can actually access it. So we're going to go ahead and click the move tool and you can see now it's uh, aligning to my cursor in the game. I'm going to zoom out here and I rotate back to my park and we're going to go to this little path right here and you can see that it doesn't quite align. Well, it's okay because the same move options I showed you guys for the walls apply to the building itself. Hold down the Z key, move your mouse left and right until it rotates in the position you want and when you've got it in the right spot, we'll call that a winner right there. Left click and drop it into place. Now this build, this um, window will stay open until you actually close it or you hit escape. Uh, that's another way to work it. Um, if you want to reselect the building, you don't have to like click and drag, you know, to make a window or anything like that. And it, it really doesn't matter what part of the building you click. If you click on the wall or the facility itself or the roof, if you click any one of those pieces, it'll select that entire building and then you can go ahead and click the edit building right there and choose any one of the building attachments to add onto it uh, or duplicate it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out again. I'm going to reselect my building and let's say that we do like it that much and we want to make a copy of it. Well, we go here to the duplicate button. I'm going to go ahead and hit that or control D works as well as you saw there. And then if you want to put one right next to it, you just get it in the spot you want, rotate it and we'll call that a winner. You can even intersect it. It really doesn't matter. This is one of the things that really makes it great about duplicating things and putting them in different spots is you can actually intersect them and make it look like there's multiple buildings uh, without having to rebuild anything and it's a great uh, time saver. Alright, so now we've got our facility. We've got two little bathrooms there and that about does it for this tutorial guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you've actually found this helpful and would like to see more, click that like button on the video and if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button. Hope to see you guys next time and until then, happy building and keep it loopy.